Hello and welcome to another episode of A Day in Life of an initiative to spread awareness about the roles, responsibilities, skills and resources of major profiles at Intuit. My name is Rishabh and I am software engineer too at Intuit. I am the host for today's episode. We have very special guest, a distinguished engineer who has made great contribution to this industry. Please join me in welcoming Rajat Khare. Thank you, Rishu. Thanks for having mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So, can you start by introducing yourself, telling us about your background and experience in the field? Sure. My name is Rajat Khare. I have been in the field of software development and architecture for about uh, 23 to 24 years. I have been in Bangalore throughout my career, which I find great pride about. I have been mostly located out of here, but worked for a lot of multinational organizations. I started my career with uh, healthcare as a key domain. I started working for Philips Healthcare and that's why I built all my chops in understanding deep systems, architecture, design, building very mission critical systems. I used to write software that goes into C-arm x-ray machines and yes. that controls their mechanical movement and image processing so you can imagine how life critical that can be mm. and uh, that's where I allude all my understanding and love for software design and architecture some of my uh, dearest mentors and people whom I still today look up to in this field uh, belong to that part of my career from there I moved on to some other organizations related to healthcare and building medical systems to eventually coming over to Intuit I have been here for about 13 to 14 years now and been a part of a diverse set of groups starting from building QuickBooks desktop and online product to eventually over the last few years being a part of some of the platform teams related to identity access and most recently a go-to-market tech and monetization and it's been a wonderful journey looking at different parts of Intuit and how it has grown over the last couple of decades. So what does a typical day in your life look like? I think a typical day involves a mix of technology deep dives, meetings with engineers, leaders and stakeholders. Uh, I like to spend as much time in person with engineers and mentorship and coaching opportunities. I feel that's where I get my energy back and I look to uh, try and balance hands-on work with strategic discussions. Towards my afternoons, I attempt to block some heads down time uh, for activities of deep thought, like writing down or reviewing a detailed design or uh, studying a strategic paper or uh, working through share outs uh, or looking ahead of the group's business and technology strategy. So you mentioned that you like to mentor engineers. So what is the role do you play in mentoring and guiding other engineers within the company? Wonderful. Something that's very close to my heart. I always feel that we can make the best contributions to the business, to our stakeholders and most importantly our customers when we hone the craft that we are responsible for. In our space, the craft that we work towards in engineering. I strongly feel in having a lot of drifts and changes in the world of technology in my 25 years with the space that the fundamental concepts and engineering principles have stayed the same. In technology from the days of desktop applications to mobile and then web applications and then most recently to everything moving to the cloud and now with AI and all the aspects coming in. But in this big change as well, the fundamental engineering principles and first principles of thinking stay the same. I believe that's where I can help engineers who start from the day one to those who've been around for a long time to recollect and revisit the importance of those engineering principles independent of the technology stack, the shiniest new language, the shiniest new concept that comes in. Uh, So that's where I derive my energy on how I should spend time with the engineers. I spend less time about coaching and guiding them of the latest new technology and tool set because honestly they are better than that with yes. mine and I learn about that from them but where I spend time is reflecting upon the importance of how do you think about the first principles how do you structure a problem how do you break it down in the right way that you know you can then find the right solutions for them so the tech industry is continuously growing and as an engineer it can be tough to stay on the latest technologies and also managing a team what advice you give to a new engineer who wants to learn technology or wants to work on a cool projects That's a great question. All of us would agree that the diversity of projects and business related activities that we all are accountable and responsible for, our days can easily get filled up. And in that space, it may look quite overwhelming of how would we continue to study things that are happening outside, let alone hone our skills on some of the things. Sometimes we attend trainings and then step back and you know lose sight of what we learned out of it. But over time, what I have looked at understanding this in a way is that it has to be approached like a game plan. How is it that we are able to find time amongst our extremely busy schedule to make time for our manager's staff meeting? Because we think it's important. How is it that we make time for, say, before heading into a tax season, yes. getting to the rigor of all the operational readiness that we want to do? Because we think it's important. But we do not think that it's important for us to carve out those three hours on a Friday afternoon to sit down and invest on ourselves and that's why we don't do it right we relegate it to reading a couple of 
articles over a weekend or swiping through our feeds on one other day. So my biggest realization is that if we have to learn something seriously, we have to give it the same importance as we give to some of our work outcomes and okay. therefore make it a game plan. So there are two to three strategies that I have personally seen work for myself and for some of the my friends and other colleagues. Identify a given quarter because quarter is a meaningful window of time, okay. two to three months and identify a couple of focus skill sets that you really want to improve your craft in. These are okay. those that you go to go beyond reading two articles or just having dabbled with it, but you want to seriously get better at. And yes. identify two of them and not 10 of them, right? And then go after whatever is it that you want to do in that space, be it taking training, spending time with experts in that field, doing some hands-on work or bringing them back into the team. Because sometimes applying some of those concepts back into the work, there's no better way to learn. But just go laser focus in that window of time on those couple of things right mm -hmm. and that focus really helps because then you start planting the right time in your calendar around that two things for a window of three months now it suddenly starts looking realizable right versus hey how will i study this big new thing that has come in ai in my extremely busy 15 hour schedule you start breaking it down just like how you break down your projects so this is the macro planning of the couple of things you want to focus on in a quarter but then add it with what i call as micro windows of time that okay. having identified those two things, I spend time to read broadly. So this is about depth, but then you read broadly about current areas of interest through a curated set of feeds, podcasts, streams. Now this day, technology has made it easy that if you really want to learn in those spurts of five and 10 minutes during your commute or while waiting for your friend or while sitting in a cafe, you can do that, right? Yes. So these all things, if methodically done the right way, can augment those two broad goals that you've talked about yes. uh, in whatever time that presents to us. And then third, uh, which I strongly believe in is the importance of a good network. And what you can learn and absorb there can be equivalent of reading like three books over not two months. Hmm. So if you are interested in these two areas that you really want to get better at, identify who are the best experts in that in your team, in your organization, in your city, in your country or across <laughs> the world, right? Yeah. At various altitudes and in a very genuine way, build those connects with them. Either you already know them or you look to build upon them, build those connects. They will last longer and these people are able to make out your genuine intention of connecting to learn and contribute versus a transactional interaction. So these are three things that I have seen if done in a methodical rinse and repeat fashion lets you build a tremendous expertise in an area over that two quarters and then followed by probably those two years if you do it in a, in a rigorous way. So how do you balance your technical expertise with your leadership responsibilities in a big firm like Intuit? I look at it in two functions. All of us are a part of an organization to help accomplish customer or a business specific outcome. So therefore, to really understand our role that we play in that is very important, which means that at any given window of a year, when we are a part of a team, it's very important for each and every one of us to understand what role do we play in the success of that team, that organization, and therefore ultimately our business and stakeholders. It should be very clear in our line of sight on what is it that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis that will lead to the success of Intuit. That means us having a very good understanding of our team's roadmap and strategy, team's roadmap and goals, and how do we make the impact that way. That being understood allows us to now say that, hey, we are ultimately technology professionals. And the ultimate way that we would be able to contribute to this business outcome is through our craft. Very good crystal clarity of our team's objectives, broken down first of all over a year and then to the respective quarters and months, tells me that what is a call to action that I'm moving towards. But the how of it comes through the thoughtful application of my technology craft skills. So therefore, on a given day, am I deeply involved in making sure that my systems are extremely robust and scalable by applying the right operational engine and rigor to another day where I'm thinking about the next generation of capabilities that we should be building by doing a lot of industry research and reading some white papers or articles and bringing out the next set of concepts. All of this in, is in light of those business outcomes. I'm a strong believer that uh, technology is a means to get to that customer focus and business focus. It starts there. And if all of us as engineers understand that, it actually makes us invest into our technology craft skill sets even better because we know what is the purpose that they are serving. There is another approach people take with where we, they just independently want to be great technology professional. And I think I respect that. But what I've seen is that in, 
uh, if it's not connected with a strong outcome and purpose either for yourself your business or for your organization yes. it for at beyond a point becomes like academic building of technology expertise right even if it's in the spirit of making great technology brand for the organization for example build a, you know or yourself like publishing a great patent or a great open source project it ultimately is driven by that purpose it versus hey let me read just read every s- single new innovation that's coming in javascript because i love javascript well then become an author and then write about mm-hmm. it well that could be an outcome but independent of a purpose becoming a tech technology professional my opinion doesn't lead you to the right but if you understand these two places together and then as i mentioned apply those three strategies of breaking it down over a quarter that what is it my business focus and to accomplish that what are is that i'm already good at so i can play to my position of strength and where is it that i i can have opportunity so i can identify those two things that if i get better at i would really take it to the next level you know if i play those things on my calendar i always say this is then a game plan right this is like making those chess moves of how do you plan that quarter to achieve both how do you see the role of distinguishing genius evolving in future great question i look at role to be a ultimate i mean that's why of the quotient of engineer being it ultimately it is role modeling the right basic first principles that i have come to appreciate and respect as a engineer this role just helps you encompass and start valuing those basic engineering roles and how they contribute to the success of a business but also amplify it to the benefit of all the others in the engineering community so to me the first responsibility that i see of the role is an amplifier of the right engineering skills that are required for us to be successful by role modeling it right and continue to approach it from a learning standpoint i do not quite think i have become an expert of x thing but i would like me to be looked at as a sincere student of mm. certain set of engineering disciplines that i have spent my career on so once i apply that mindset you know the key things that i bring back is how do we continuously help our teams get good at their engineering craft and then as i said being able to apply that intersection st- uh, point of identifying the right purpose to exercise that craft skill set it is in that establishing that connecting point comes the second part of what i look as the responsibility of this role is to look ahead of what does the business and technology strategy of the organization look in terms of short mid and long right what is it that we should be doing in the next 6 months in the next 1 year and 3 years right for the success of business and in order to do so what are the right set of technology skill sets and uh, learning that is required for this role as well as for the team that is the primary role in my opinion of this role that is the intersection point of those two so when you establish that really well take that vision back to the team it helps yourself but also hundreds of engineers in as a part of your team to say hey this is exactly what we need to do as a part of meeting that business purpose but in order to do so here are the set of 10 things that we need to get good at and maybe we are good at 1 3 and 7 but there are others that we need to good at so it's like a continuous journey right yes. uh, so establishing that interconnection and the clarity around that to me is the biggest uh, role of this do you also participate in industry conferences events and communities you want to suggest for the audience outside the intuit Yeah absolutely I, in fact that's an area of personal passion I seem to have a fond liking for you know participating especially technology related conferences to me I see this as in two ways a it uh, gives me the opportunity to be a part of being the student of the engineering uh, craft but at the same time uh, you know this whole uh, space is about sharing ideas and and uh, you know the groundwork that we've done so it's almost our responsibility that we when we've struck around a great pattern a great idea or a great practice that has worked well for us we use all possible forums that are that we can exercise to our ability to go and share it because that's how at one fine day one particular person shared an idea or wrote a book or wrote a standard that we are practicing right so it's almost a responsibility in some ways to give it back so with that uh, mindset i continue to find opportunities as time permits of course over a quarter or a period of 6 months to participate in conferences as well as uh, you know find speaking opportunities now what i have come to understand is that again if you are mindful and thoughtful about it today is a interconnected world of uh, social media and the great work that some of our organizations do for us it's not extremely hard to do that 
we just have to be mindful of it and raise your hand that yes uh, i am uh, i would be keen to speak on the next mm-hmm. speaking opportunity that comes up and what i've seen is that if you send those vibrations enough out speaking opportunities come my way without looking for it or scavenging for it you just have to have that intention the other interesting part with this is that uh, if and when these come it always helps to approach it with a mindset that you should have four to five canned stories in your back pocket if a conference invite comes five days from now if you were to start thinking about you know this great presentation that you would like to give or this talk that you would like to give in five days you would obviously be shallow on your thoughts but if you say hey, in the course of this year let me plan five great stories of okay engineering work some ideas some best practices that worked or whatever you want and keep them semi ready uh, then when a particular occasion comes you just tweak it curate it and make it ready for that forum uh, and that approach really works well so i sometimes see people hey let me come up with the next conference where i get an opportunity to speak and i'll start preparing on that uh, talk or the presentation take it the quite the other way around always have like five stories which are almost ready and you would be surprised when an opportunity presents that you can quickly tweak it in a matter of like couple of days or make it into a blog or make it into an article and so on uh, so that's what i encourage all of us like if you almost start thinking about ability for us to start speaking out actively or start writing out actively it all comes down to our day to day work when we are approaching a project or when we are learning some new technology can we almost have a definition of done to start identifying those five stories in our back pocket yes. now the reality is in our life if we think about 25 ideas they will culminate to 10 concrete ones and five stories right so in order to come to those five stories in your back pocket we should think about those 20 to 25 possible candidate items that have to come out from our day to day work it won't be one fine day that you will uh, sit and think about those three great talks that you want to give you have to take inspirations on a daily basis and keep building that backlog of 25 things scrap out things that now are irrelevant or you're not so excited about add new things uh, but keep curating those top five stories on a given day or a month when you come across an opportunity you don't say oh i don't have anything to say or i don't i'm not quite ready yet rather you say yeah okay fine you know give me this meaningful window of time and i'll be there it this has come to to realization after years of thinking about it this way but i quite strongly think it almost comes back to that three principles of thinking about it on a daily basis so if you do that enough you will never be short of enough opportunities to speak or enough topics to speak so being a leader how do you foster a diverse and inclusive environment within the company if you look at the diversity of use cases that we solve for our customers if you look at look at the diversity of engineering problems that we have in the systems we build and support of our products and services we would all agree that we need brains with different uh, perspectives different experiences and different questions that we should bring to almost cater to that multiples of millions of permutations and combinations that our use cases can come together so to me the need for us to bring diversity and inclusion is a very scientific need it's less about having a certain gender representation or community representation yes of course but that to me is led by a very scientific realization that we as humans uh, need to think very differently about a given problem on the table a given customer problem a given technology problem if we all of us are thinking about it the same way and are asking the same questions completely agreeing with each other we will build a very shoddy and a very a subpar solution because we wouldn't have thought about it in all aspects so because of that scientific reason is why i feel there should be diversity and inclusion in our teams where there should be as many people with different backgrounds different levels of experience of course different gender and community backgrounds because that helps us to break down the problem in different ways and that's the only way we can build for the diversity of customers that we serve we don't have customers of only one kind uh, across the globe right so how can we have the teams that look exactly the same <laughs> so that's how i think about it and i approach it in that fashion when i find a certain kind of perspective that is possibly lacking in a given team i look for that perspective to be get getting added through diversity versus a certain number game there are cases where there are conflicts between priorities and stakeholders technical priorities and stakeholders expectations how do you deal with that <laughs> i wish there was a perfect answer to solve that i am still looking for one uh, but yeah i think Uh, we all recognize that on a given day we would like to make sure that we spend enough focus on technology investments which are required to keep our systems healthy free of debt and continue to innovate 
for what's forward but that comes with also balancing with immediate business priorities and requests i i think it's quite just that craft of making sure that we again going back on a regular basis keep a very well curated backlog of what's the most important things to do on a given period of time versus waiting for that one annual cycle or one uh, you know time when we scramble to identify what's the top most things if we do that methodically enough we would be able to with the right data and rationale be able to bring points on why in a given window of time it's important to invest significantly on a big business outcome and other times also focus on this important tech debt or a big burning problem which unless address will not lead to the right business velocity and quality that we want to right uh, i have seen that for most cases if we continue to have have that rigor uh, we are able to balance these two over a period of time now i do agree on a given day a given week a given quarter uh, a lot of judgment and multiple factors play in but over a year of worth of a planning if we have a well curated set of technology investments that are required uh, we mostly are able to balance it uh, you know with the business there are times when we enter into such burning state of a given system that we raise hands to say that not just the usual 20 to 30 percent i need help in investing about 50 percent of my time on some burning technology problems and that's why when you have a curated list with sound data you can make that case stronger that give me this quarter or give me the six months where i want to invest significantly more on technology but i'll bring the benefits back in these ways that i have seen mostly uh, you know resounding support from our business stakeholders so no perfect formula no perfect thing that works on any given day but by and large over a period of time i think it does work can you share any interesting or memorable experience from your career yeah i think couple of the examples that i would call out is especially as been more and more time in building uh, a platform mindset to solving problem which is not solve for every use case or every products needs in unique and specific ways but think back and look at more generic and higher abstractions of problem i have seen uh, that if if done the right way uh, and with the right intent uh, we can be completely surprised of what are the different ways in which the same uh, capability could view that we wouldn't have imagined on day one a couple of example that i want to bring is in earlier days and when i was a part of big books product teams we would we were looking at the first generation of integrating third party apps with uh, with more of an api based approach how can we expose the various capabilities in the quickbooks product as apis and enable third party apps to build on it and as we think about conceptualizing those apis and how do we model them it would be hard to think ahead of what are the different ways of in which third party apps will come and integrate with us so uh, we used to call this as v3 apis back in the days on on quickbooks and as we started modeling them the additional time and energy that we spent around you know use cases to keep them as generic came in a big time as help because we could look at apps from telecommunications companies to service providers to commerce applications and others that could build, build bring in use cases to build around the quickbooks ecosystem which we had no clue as engineers when we were sitting down and drafting the specification of those apis uh, the learning that it gave at that time is that if we think for the platform mindset and make it as generic uh, we'll be surprised with what comes out of it another example more later down the line in my recent experiences with monetization capabilities is that as we look at a diversity of commerce experiences and shopping experiences that are presented to our customers across our product there are a lot of differences in the way it's very specific to the nature of the product and the kind of information you want to collect the actor who's performing that operation whether it's the actual customer or a sales agent or an accountant but again what i saw with incredible joy was that whenever we were able to step back and model as generic and and variability driven experiences as long as we were able to uh, plant enough configurability into some of those Uh, we were surprised at the use cases that could be powered with the same limited set of uh, experiences and services that we built i think these are two examples that come to my mind uh, which have reinsured my trust that if we think with the right platform mindset we can unlock use cases that we cannot imagine today but will come up in the future thank you so much rajat for joining us today and sharing your experiences